depressing. <laughs> With all you've well, got you to do. I, I don't know. I'm in awe of this. I yeah. really am. How have well, you been? Uh, just fine. Good. Which side is I? You're right over there. Sir. I'm right over there. Right. Well, what do you want to talk about, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you the life story of the Gipper. <laughs> I would like to do one thing with you. Right. Detroit is in euphoria. De Detroit, the city, is in euphoria. Detroit is a rebounding city, remarkably, under your economy. And the Tigers mean a great deal, too, to the psyche of that city as part of the whole rebound. I'd like to quickly get that out of you, if I could. Okay? All right. All right. Stand by. A couple of questions about the Olympics, quick in and out. Uh, anything you don't want to talk about? No. Now, Mike McManus talked to me about the golf, the way you're being on it at the golf tournament. About the what? Golf tournament. Oh. Um, well, we won't get it. Okay, are we ready? Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Any water before we begin? Jan, we've already had our settlement. Just the two of us. This hasn't been easy, Mr. President. <laughs> You know what it is to see a young woman for the first time and be beset by a longing that's so eternal. <laughs> All set? How long have you given about five seconds at any time? <clears throat> Mr. President, as you well know, with all of the problems and complexities in the world today, somehow in our country, Sports retains a tremendous significance and impact. And I think maybe what's happening with the Detroit Tigers and the city of Detroit is an evidence, don't you? Well, uh, I, haven't been, I haven't been contributing anything to the baseball standings <laughs> there, but maybe the other. Uh, there is a thing of spirit in sports, and I think it's something that is pretty unique uh, to our country and goes back a, a long way. I know many countries can't understand uh, our seriousness with sports and how seriously we, we take them here. But I, I wonder if that isn't a part of what makes America what it is, that um, we can put things in their proper compartments and uh, still go out there for an afternoon at the ballpark and have an escape from the cares of the day. At the same time, sports and politics can become, unfortunately, intertwined. Take the current Olympic situation. You've thought about this long and hard, Mr. President. Should the Olympics be saved? Should they be saved? Yes, sir. Yes. I believe that ab above everything else. The, uh, you go back to their heritage. Uh, they came into being in Greece in a time when that little country was beset by constant uh, recurrent wars between their city-states and the Olympics were created to uh, to see if, they, if that couldn't substitute in some way. So in a sense you could say they were almost born in politics. But they became such a factor that even if a war was going on at Olympic time in early Greece, they'd postpone the war in order to carry out the Olympics. And uh, I wish we could be that civilized. <laughs> Here we're uh, uh, walking out on the Olympics instead of the war. That's true. Now, sir, corollary question. Can they be saved in the light of the current situation? Yes, I think they can. Uh, this isn't going to go on forever, this uh, kind of relationship uh, with the Soviet Union doing what they did. Uh, it's true. Uh, Perhaps we made the first move when, uh, when we called for the boycott four years ago. Uh, admittedly, uh, it reflected the seriousness with which we view a, a great nation, uh, one of the superpowers invading a neighbor nation militarily as they did and as they are doing. But uh, the Olympics, uh, I think, uh, are too valuable a tradition for the world to, uh, to give up on. But, sir, as president of our country, 
you would not forfeit one shred of what we stand for by giving concessions to the Soviets that you don't agree with, would you? No. No. And unfortunately right now, I, in the present state uh, of things, uh, there isn't much that I could do by way of intervening in trying to uh, bring about a, a change of their decision because I think that uh, anything I might say could be the kiss of death. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, it's a pleasure. That's like three, three and a half minutes. That doesn't hold the president really? up. Now, yeah, I was asked by, I guess it was Mike McManus about this golf thing. Do you know anything about that? No, what, what are we, no, what are we talking about? The last that? time that you were scheduled, sir, that was when uh, oh. the golf tournament, the, the golf award, you could do me the Mr. Cosell had to reschedule. <laughs> oh, the, well, that, isn't that, it wasn't that, if I remember correctly, is that a scholastic? Um, yes, the All American College Golf Dinner. Yeah, and it was and it was begun by um, uh, Arnold Palmer. I began it with Arnold and uh, Bill Fugazi. Yeah, I can't believe that Arnold Palmer has to play to qualify for the U.S. Open. Can you? <laughs> no. Under the USGA's antiquated rules, Very the man-made golf in all the yeah. world for everybody. Yeah. And those stuffy little rules of yesteryear, and now he has to play in Cleveland, I think, yeah. this weekend to qualify. Him. He has to qualify. It's the most, the most there, absurd there. thing I've ever heard. You should maybe have a thing like tennis where they're seated and uh, yeah. where some are just automatically oh, ridiculous. in. Now, are you familiar with this dinner at all? Because I don't want to let Mike McManus down. But well, this is a... <laughs> um, that award... Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was for. I was very it's proud the of it. All American Collegiate Golf Foundation Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah, Lifetime Achievement. I, <laughs> it was originally scheduled in April. It's June, April. Yeah. June 11th, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there anything you want to say about that? I'm, I'm very proud to receive it and to figure that maybe. I, I, this will take about 30 seconds, Mr. President. Right. Okay. So I don't let yeah. Mike down. Uh, I enjoy that talk at the World Series. Okay, stand by. You do a two shot. You do a one shot. When you came into, I enjoyed that talk when you came into the booth at the World Series. Oh. Stand by. Mr. President, you're receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award at the annual All-American College Golf Dinner, the foundation giving you the award. You accept it, I take, because golf is a very important aspect of your life in terms of recreational activity. Well, yes, but at the, at the same time, the receiving of that award, and particularly from an organization of that kind, it was whether I ever had a golf club in my hand again or not, it was a very proud moment. And since they called it a lifetime achievement, I've decided that I hope that I'll have more time to uh, help ensure that I deserve it. You never did cotton to Arnold Palmer's excellence vis-a-vis -vis the quality of your game, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have a picture that I treasure with him, an eight by 10, taken to the Bohemian Grove. And there, in one of the afternoon affairs, they had persuaded him and me to get up with a little mariachi band, and each one of us with a mariachi <laughs> beat time to the music. And when, uh, when it was finished, we were both standing there with the mariachis in our hands, he just turned to me very casually and said, let me see your grip. And I, well, and I took the mariachi and I got a golf grip on it, <laughs> and, uh, and he told me, he says, you hook. And I said, like, for the last two months. And then he started to show me with his, and they, someone got a picture, and I have it. A living color 8 by 10 of Arnold Palmer and me standing there, each of us with a mariachi in our hands <laughs> and a golf grip. That's marvelous. Would you believe that the United States Golf Association, sticking by its rules, is forcing Arnold Palmer to have to play to qualify for the U.S. Open? Uh, it, it would seem to me they ought to have a better system. There's some recognition for it. Uh, 
people with that achievement. Once again, thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, my pleasure. Very kind. Stop taking. Mr. President, this is New Bar Stone, our director. Hi, how are you? Pleasure to meet you, sir. Well, I see you. I can't believe you took this amount of time. I can't ah. thank you enough. Now I have to tell you, though, there's high ranks of, of uh, diplomacy where sports can figure. The other day when Duarte was here, yeah. Duarte came in and all of a sudden looked at me and said, you're my hero. <laughs> and I, he went to Notre Dame. And in Notre Dame, the freshman class every year is shown the Canute Rockney picture as indoctrination. So I'm his hero because I was the Gipper. <laughs> so when he left to go up to the other Congress, I said, win one for the Gipper. <laughs> Thank well, you so much. Good to see, good to see you. you. Remember Monday Night Football in San Francisco when you were governor? And John Lennon came into the booth? <laughs> yes. That was yeah. an extraordinary. Glad to lift you a small. Well, I feel good. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Well, thank you, sir. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.